Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada and on this channel I do art tutorials on Tuesdays and Fridays, so consider subscribing if you are new here. And today's Tuesday video, we're doing something a little different. I have a tutorial for you, but I also have an announcement. Um, so let's talk tutorial first. In today's video, we are going to discuss painting white flowers in watercolor. How do you paint a white flower on a white page? It's a little tricky and it's all about picking up texture and shadow and we're going to get into that. But first, the announcement. Okay, ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Today, as of December 3rd, I am launching my very first watercolor e-course. This is watercolors for the absolute beginner with a focus on flowers and leaves. Chris and I have been working on this course for quite a few months now and we're so proud of the content that we can offer in this form. Um, the idea is that we take you through all of the fundamentals and we really break things down. I'm talking about color mixing and color theory, which is a big subject. And we get into, of course, all the supplies and techniques and the way the course moves, you get a chance to implement the supplies and then implement the color mixing and then the techniques. And then we start talking about when we would employ that certain color mixing or that technique. So I really think it has a nice flow. It is going to be selling for $70, but for the first week we're doing an early bird slash late Black Friday sale and you can purchase it for $49. So make sure to buy in the next seven days to get the deal. And uh, today's tutorial is just a little section of the course. It's the section, of course, on white, painting white flowers. So it'll give you a little taste of what you would be getting if you do decide to purchase. So if you like what you see in today's tutorial, and if you're a beginner who wants more in-depth information on watercolor, that's what this course is all about. And you can head over to shadacampbell.com to purchase. All the videos are hosted on my website and you'll have lifetime access to them, meaning there is no time limit and you can watch and enjoy the courses at your own pace. All right, here is the section on painting white flowers from module five of my watercolor e-course. In this section, we are going to talk about the tricky subject of painting white flowers. So let's do a quick supply rundown. I'm using cold press paper today. If I flip over, you can see the label here. Just to reiterate what we've learned, it says cold pressed and 140 pound is the weight. I won't have to stretch it. Um, this is good paper and cold pressed is great and is the choice of many watercolor artists. I also have my paper towel for blotting, two glasses of clean water, and then two synthetic pointed round brushes, a six and an eight. So um, fairly good size round brushes there. And I'll probably use the six for most of it. Although I am starting with the eight for mixing. And then if you look down here, there's Payne's Gray right in the corner of this Koi watercolor palette. And Payne's Gray is a color name that you'll hear again and again if you purchase paints. Many of the colors are named for maybe the person that developed them, like Hooker's Green is named for uh, William Hooker, who was an English botanist, and he needed a certain color of green to paint the plants um, and so on. So anyways, Payne's Gray is the color that we're going to be using today because we're gonna use gray to paint white, <laughs> sort of. So I'm mixing it up with lots and lots of water. I'll also mix um, a sort of yellowy brown color because I'm going to paint daisies. That's the flower I wanna use today to help us learn to paint white flowers on a white page. So I am mixing up my two colors, and if we get a real close up, you can see that I've mixed up sort of two areas of gray on the palette. I have an area that's very opaque, very pigmented, and one that's more translucent, transparent. So that way I can pick up paint from either side of the palette while I'm painting. And then I like to mix a little bit of pink or red into my paints gray. This is a personal choice, but I just love the sort of rich, just slightly purpley hue that it gives my gray. All right, let's start painting some daisies. The trick with white flowers is to capture the detail of the flower and make a white flower stand out on white paper without it looking too heavy. It still has to look delicate and light and beautiful and all those qualities that the flower has. So for the daisies, we're going to start by painting the center. So I've done that in yellow, it's sort of a semicircle. 
And then we'll start using our gray. I've picked up a very light gray. So very, very light. If you can barely see it, that's okay. And I'm just using the brush to start painting petals. So let's do one. We just drag the brush across the page and then using the tip of the brush, we finish that petal and create the petal shape on the other side. So one stroke to create a bit of shadow and then we use the tip of the brush to draw in the other side of that petal and you can see me doing that here over and over I sort of do the wider stroke on the left and then I finish the petal with a very delicate stroke a very delicate line on the right we're gonna do this over and over again so don't worry and then I'm adding just a slightly slightly darker gray at the very top near the stamen but you can also come back in and do that later I like that I'm getting a little wet into wet action here and it bleeds a little but you if you want more control um, wait wait until it dries I'm gonna do a real close-up here although I know the gray is so light it's a little hard to see but I'm for this one I've started with just the brush strokes that will make up the left side of the petal and then once I've done a bunch of them here I'll come back in with the tip of the brush and draw in the other side of each petal so that's another way of approaching this daisy flower the idea here, what I'm trying to achieve, is just doing the shadows, the shadowy parts of a white petal. And we'll add more detail later as this begins to dry. But I want it to look as if there's a highlight where the white page comes through, that's the top of the petal. And then there's this low light, this shadow, and that's what I'm painting here. And you can see me going around and adding more daisies. I'll keep doing the stamens. If I do a daisy in profile, I just do a semicircle for the center. If I do one that's sort of facing the viewer, I do a full circle in yellow or brown. And for this one, it's a daisy from the side. So I've painted a semicircle in brown. Then I'm doing these larger brush strokes and then I come back in with the tip of the brush to finish off those petals. So you can do a few at a time like I'm doing here. You don't need to do the entire flower at once. And I'm just doing it in the softest, lightest gray. It's just sort of barely there. And you'll see as we go along how we're going to build shadow and detail to make these white flowers really pop off the page, even though they're white and the page is white. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is just continue to paint daisies so that you can watch me do a few more, but I'm doing all of them in the same style. I'm using that very light, watery, barely there gray, and I'm painting these little petals. You can give yourself a little guide for where you want to place each petal. You can do just a very light gray outline of a petal, although I do think doing a bit of that shadowy work is a good idea. But you can see here, I'm just doing the faint outline and I'll continue to uh, paint more and more. Some are small, some are large. I would encourage you to do the same. Try painting a whole page full of daisies and uh, you'll really get the hang of it. You wanna mix up a paint that is incredibly watery, very watery. If it looks too light, that's probably a good place to start. <laughs> and um, so there are my daisies. Now, the first ones I've painted have started drying. So I'm going to pull a gray that's just slightly darker at this point. And you can see I'm using the tip of the brush. It's still quite a watery gray, but it's just got that much more pigment that it will stand out. And I'm going to start placing these little lines right around the stamen at the center of the flower and maybe a few on the end of each petal to help give this flower a little more texture. Very few flower petals are super smooth. They tend to have just that little hint of texture. And what we need to do when we paint white flowers is to capture shadow and texture because we can't capture color. I mean, in a way we're, we're painting white, but we paint white through doing shadow and texture. And those really light brush strokes that I laid down, those look now like the low lights on the petal. And now these darker, tiny lines are adding that little bit of texture to the petal. So shadow and texture, that is what we're capturing here. 
You can see on this one, my gray is still so light, so watery. So there, if you're thinking, oh, I don't know if this is dark enough, that's good. The last thing you wanna do is look at the piece and go, oh, whoa, I was too heavy handed with the gray, it's too dark. You could, because if it's too light, you can always build. You can keep going, you can keep improving, keep trying, but if it's too dark, um, I'm afraid it might just look too heavy and you might feel you need to start again, which there's nothing wrong with that. This definitely takes practice and there's, um, there's no better place to start than just in your watercolor sketchbook or with some paper and you just start doing a whole page of daisies. I wasn't as happy with my first one as I was with my last one um, within this piece, so know that. And I think on this little flower, you can really see how beautiful the gray is when you add just that hint of pink to it. It has a wonderful purpley look that looks so pretty with the yellow centers. And speaking of the yellow centers, now that I've added some gray using a wet on dry paint technique, I'm going to do the same for the stamens. And now that all the centers of the flowers are dry, I'll come back in with fresh paint and add a little more shading, a little more detail. I'm kind of doing a bit of a stippling. And uh, at the same time, if I decide I wanna add a little more gray, I'll do that. So I'm just layering and layering and layering. The paint tends to dry quite quickly because we're using a um, very light color and we're not uh, doing very thick layers. So I find that I just keep going around and around and I add some more brown to the center of the flowers and I add some more gray um, also near the center, all those tiny broken lines and I'm adding shadow and texture. And I think these daisies, you can see now that they're really starting to pop off the page, even though they're just white flowers on a white page. And we've done that by layering. And we've done mostly wet on dry. We did a little bit of wet into wet with some of those first gray petals, but for the most part, we're letting things dry and then coming back in with more paint, just building really slowly. I think when you take your time with this, you can you're very in control and you can see if it starts to get too heavy and the flowers don't look delicate anymore. And with that said, I think I'm pretty much done with my white daisies. I'm happy with the way that they look and with the way that they're standing out on the white page. So what I've done here is I've used a pencil to mark out where I want all the stems to sit. And now I've mixed up this really cool dark green and I am just painting in these very thin stems. And what I wanna talk about now is one other way that you can help your white flowers to stand out on the page. And that's uh, kind of a simple technique. And it's simply to enclose the flowers or to border them with a darker color. So if you wanna do a wreath of white flowers, if you surround them with dark green leaves, they're really going to pop. And so that's what I'm also going to add to this white floral piece is to enclose or border some of these flowers with dark green. And you can see here, I'm putting this leaf in behind this flower and it's really going to help make it pop because now we've got that contrast of the light, very light, delicate petals and the dark green leaves. And I'll do another leaf over here. So this is just one more thing you can do. If you're struggling with your white flowers, you can always paint leaves around them. You know, mark out the flowers first give yourself a guide for where you want to place them. And then you could even start by painting all the dark leaves in. And at that point, you're gonna have these flower or floral shapes sort of popping out from the dark leaves and you'll be able to shade them just as much as you need to. Um, but they will stand out of course, because they're bordered by a darker color. So I'm just placing a few more little leaves in here and I'm really happy with the way this piece is turning out. I think painting white flowers is a really fun process and it challenges you, but the result is lovely. And there's my daisies all finished.